What is up, everybody? This is your Cosmic Homegirl, and I'm doing a weekly forecast for all of us for the week starting August 30th of 2020 and ending September 6th of 2020. So we are now in the last quarter of the year. I'm going to be a nerd during Virgo season <laughs> and use quarters and, you know, stuff like that to describe dates, taking me back to my nerdy accountant days. <laughs> Um, but anyway, before we get started on what the cosmic weather is for this week, I just wanted to announce to you guys once again that you need to come hang out with me live on September 2nd of 2020. And um, this is where I will be talking about Saturn in Aquarius. So we've already had Saturn dip into Aquarius for a few months out of this year in 2020 and Saturn will go back into Aquarius at the very end of the year and stay there till 2023. What does all of this mean? Well, you know, we've already had a taste of Saturn in Aquarius and I mean social distancing, like, yo, like so much of what is the new normal has been brought about by Saturn in Aquarius just for it dipping its Saturn dipping his toe in Aquarius for a hot second brought about so freaking much. So I want to talk about what is ahead based on that transit. But um, I'm going to look back in history a little bit to kind of explain things. And, you know, for us to, I guess you could say, make predictions. I don't, I don't always like to talk about predictions because, um, People make stuff like that really like corny, it, you know, in the mainstream and astrology, like fortune tellers and bullshit like that. It's it's not about that. It's it's looking at patterns and cycles throughout time and history in order to look ahead into the future and see the potential of what can happen. Um, so I'll definitely be going over that in this presentation, in this class. Um, so this is the page. I'm on NadiaShaw.com, okay? And I have the link in the description area and I will also drop a comment. Um, it's also in my Instagram profile and the, the, the link is in my Instagram profile. So um, to sign up for it, you guys can click on that link. Um, you can choose your own tuition only through August 31st. So um, by the time this is posted and you guys listen to it, it may still, you may still have time to do that, but it's until the end of the day, August 31st, you can choose your own tuition, which is as little, as low as $5. Um, so Nadia has been very generous with giving that option. And then after the 31st, um, the class is at its normal rate. And also it'll be available for the replay. If you guys are not allowed, if not allowed, <laughs> yes, yeah, Saturn grounds your ass and says, you're not allowed. Just like a uh, strict parent no but if you guys are not able to join me um live and it's at 3 p.m pacific time i know i have a lot of people on my on uh on pacific time along with me um so it's 3 p.m pacific time 6 p.m eastern time in the u.s um if you're further away th than that then you know check your time zone but if you can't join live it's all to the g because the replay will be available and I will post that information once I get that from Nadia after the 2nd of September. So come through and kick it, you guys. Let's discuss Saturn and Aquarius. It's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. You guys know how I roll. I don't, I, I could be super nerdy and I am going to get a little nerdier in this presentation, of course. But, you know, I explain things like astrology is sprinkled in with regular old, regular schmegler talk. Okay. Like daily, regular stuff. Um, so I'm not going to make it too difficult if you're like pretty new to astrology. So come through, kick it, hang out, um, sign up before August 31st to get your own, um, to get your tuition rate as low as $5 um, and choose your, tu into your, choose your tuition. Lord have mercy. I can't talk. Um, so yeah, Synchroni Synchronicity University speaker. I am in this dope ass lineup of astrologers. I'm so excited and I am honored to be um, in this lineup. So come check it out, you guys. I'll see you guys on, on September 2nd. Um, so now let's get into the weekly forecast, the cosmic weather. What's cracking? What's going on? <coughs> Sorry. So another announcement 
Uh, real quick is I have a video up for the month of September already here on my YouTube channel. If you haven't peeped it yet, go check it out because you can look ahead at the whole entire month of September. Like what's the energy like? Um, if you if you're curious about that from like now to the end of the month then go peep it. OK, so it's right here on my channel. But just focusing in on this week, what's going on? Well, let's just jump right into the fact that we are going to have well, we have um, I already covered, you know, the 30th part of the 30th last week. The moon is in Aquarius. Um, it's time to be an alien. And for some people, it's time to be a damn social justice warrior <laughs> and post post stuff about whatever it is that you're a fighter for and post words like um, never mind. I'm not even going to say anything because I don't want to offend any social justice warriors because they're offended by every freaking thing. <laughs> uh, I have the South node in Aquarius, so I'm highly allergic to stuff like that. Um, and, you know, so I'll just keep that to myself. But anyway, uh, if you stand up and fight for any cause, I'm not going to clown. Like there are people that really do a lot of dope work that is necessary and speak about things that is necessary to be spoken about um who embody the aquarian energy or they tap into the aquarian energy when it's present in the sky um that really do make changes and differences in our world so i can't completely clown but you know i'm your girl is just a goofball <laughs> anyway uh but not everybody gets my humor so i'll just z i'll zip it on that but um, moon and Aquarius days are days to where you can either feel like you're allergic to humanity and you're the alien and you're just the observer looking at all these silly humans and their dumb asses. Like, what are they doing? Are they just walking around bopping their heads together like they're idiots? What are they doing? And I'm not one of them. So sometimes moon and Aquarius days can make you feel like that or they can make you feel like being more of a part of humanity and joining forces with other human beings to hold hands and sing kumbaya and make some shit happen i don't know but um moon and aquarius days could be ones to where you are interested more in like aliens and sci-fi and conspiracy theories and all that good stuff okay so the 30th the moon is in aquarius um the 31st the moon is in aquarius and we get to September 1st. Dun, dun, dun. This is a big day. The first day of September, number one. Number two, we have a full moon in Pisces. So the moon enters Pisces in the wee hours of September 1st. And um, moon in Pisces days in general, you could be really into your peaceful hippie side, into mermaids and sparkles and unicorns and fantasy stuff and fairies and all that good stuff um you could be more in tune with spirituality you can be more in tune with music with art with dance um with wanting to escape through watching movies stuff like that so that's moon and pisces days in general you can be more sensitive <clears throat> excuse me more um like have more empathy for people and also animals any living beings you're just like oh you know you just want to rescue them all and save the world so um that's moon and pisces days um now we have the moon <sighs> the full moon in pisces which is it's in the evening september 1st if you are over here in the western part of the world but if you're more east it's going to end up probably being september 2nd that um the moon is at its peak you know being the full moon so what do we have here we have a full moon in pisces now i did speak in detail about this in the september video so go check that out um so a little bit more about this full moon in pisces well we do have a full moon in pisces every year so i'm not gonna be a cornball and blow this up to be some big huge phenomenon with huge shifts happening or anything like that because come on it, it's every year we have a full moon in motherfucking pisces okay we have a full moon every sign every year so but um what does create different shifts and things happening uh it depends upon the aspects that are being made to the full moon so once again for those who don't know a full moon is when the moon is in a sign and the sun is in the opposite sign of the moon um they come to the same degree opposing each other in the opposite signs so it's like a tug of war back and forth game between it's like a little argument between the sun and the moon you know the the sun is a is masculine energy it's action oriented wants to just 
you know, take action. And then the moon is more feminine, receptive energy. Um, so there could be decisions that you have to make as with every full moon, like between the head and the heart or something. Um, usually people do come to a final decision, um, ba like on uh, when there's a full moon, some final decision. And of course, I'm going to be a nerd and say, depends on where Pisces and Virgo are at in your own natal chart with how this full moon will affect you personally. And what breaking point will be brought to you in your world. Um, but in general, Pisces and Virgo axis is about like logic versus emotion. Um, the physical world versus the spiritual world. You know, believing in something and just knowing and you don't have to have any, any tangible evidence of it. You just know and you just feel. Versus having to have the facts and the receipts and the evidence and are you holding something in your hand that you could show someone that actually proves something, you know? So it's a back and forth between those two things. Um, a full moon in Pisces can be a good full moon if you want to um, release something or start something new that has to be has to do with your health. Um, it's a balance between your physical health, which, which is Virgo, and your spiritual, emotional, mental health, which is Pisces, okay? So you could, um, Virgo is work and Pisces is vacation or doing absolutely fucking nothing, <laughs> just floating in outer space, floating in water, just doing nothing. You have no responsibility. So that's where they, um, they're opposites too. So there could be something in your world that's like, should I um, put in all this work and be in the Virgo hamster wheel? Or should I hop off the hamster wheel and relax for once and chill and not worry about a schedule, a routine? Oh my God, this isn't going according to plan. Oh, like, you know, should you just say f your plans and just float and just be? Um, so that's something that in general, the full moon in Pisces can bring to light. Now this full moon is being, um, zapped by the planet Uranus in Taurus. So, um, it's making a sextile, a very light and positive aspect to the moon and also making a trine aspect to the sun because they're both in earth signs they are both at like that 10th degree. So it's like exactly, um, Uranus is really exactly making aspects to the moon and the sun. And what does that mean? Well, this planet is the great awakener. It rules actual lightning, like lightning bolts, electricity, static electricity. Um, so just imagine the changes that it brings to you personally and your world is it's like lightning struck you know what i'm saying like you're just walking minding your own business and you get struck by lightning and what happens you get sh shocked you're shocked and shook <laughs> um that's what happens and you are thrown on a different path that you never expected you never expected to get struck by lightning right so that's um what this planet can bring to you so the feeling of um, what it brings, you know, the changes that it, it can bring are like that are like being your world is being struck by lightning. So uh, that aspect is brought into the full moon. So there could be some sudden shocking events or surprises um, that are brought about by, uh, you know, within this full moon. And then we have um, Jupiter. Jupiter is making a trine. It's at a distance from the sun um, and and the moon, you know, seven degrees apart from them. But it, it may still have an influence, not as um strong of, of an influence as Uranus because it's at the same degree 10 10 10 right so it's like being like exact beams being shot you know back and forth between these um luminaries and and this planet but um Jupiter is like faintly sending little vibes and beams and sparkles over this way and gold coins you know I always call Jupiter rich uncle Jupiter <laughs> he loves to just give everybody gold coins and he he rules the sign of Sagittarius and what holiday is during Sagittarius season at least here in the U.S. Thanksgiving you know and also um we just call it the holiday season because Christmas time uh, not Christmas Day, but the time that time of year people tend to be more generous and giving and 
you know, they want to shop, they want to indulge and celebrate and ha 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 ha, eat, drink and be merry, right? So Jupiter rules all of that. So that's why I say he's rich uncle Jupiter. He's got all his, he's got money. He wants to share. He wants to be, you know, he's abundant. And so when you're abundant, you just believe in infinite abundance and you just have no problem sharing that and giving money to people, buying things for them, um, being super generous so that's what jupiter rules um however jupiter is in stingy old capricorn and retrograde so he's not trying to give out too many coins right now um he's pinching them and counting every single <laughs> penny and saying well i don't know have you earned this yeah so um but he's still sending some some love some vibes to the full moon okay so he's still aspecting and influencing it a little bit jupiter is also about um faith and belief in things and and you know pisces energy is about dreams um dreams that you have like your literal dreams that you have when you're asleep but also pisces energy is very dreamer oriented like when you have a dream to be a certain thing, to become something or someone, um, to do is have a certain prof profession, um, to express yourself with a certain art, artistic talent that you have, and and to just be able to live a lifestyle of doing just that. Whatever your dreams are, like the goals that you have, but the, but they're like a dream of yours. <clears throat> Excuse me, you know what I mean by that. Um, Pisces energy is is associated with that and then we have you know Virgo energy which is about hard work and practicality so the, and then you know Jupiter is about your dreams and your goals too it's more like it's more about goals but you have the ambition but also the faith that whatever you put out there is going to manifest whatever you whatever efforts you put in there's going to be a return no matter what you don't even think for a second about things not working out when it comes to Jupiter so um Jupiter is influencing the full moon in that way um which is is dope but like I said he's retro and in Capricorn which he doesn't feel comfortable there but you know still might get uh, at least one gold coin thrown your way <laughs> with this full moon he might throw you one and then scowl about it and be like well I'm not sure if you earned it but here you know so anyhow so that's the full moon in Pisces on the 1st of September for first or second depending upon where you live um also on this the first and the second we have um the sun is in a trine aspect to uranus in taurus so um this can bring out individuality a little bit more within people people may be more um they may be, be more inclined to express themselves in a whatever i do what i want type of a way maybe a little you know, showing off whatever your uniqueness is. Um, if you have like unique talents or abilities or, you know, ways that you like to dress, um, the sun, it rules expression of the self and the ego. So when it makes an aspect to Uranus, it's like you could be expressing yourself and your ego and your, how you look, um, like uh your true authentic self through how you look you know so some people might be dressing a little weird but this is earth energy earth energy tends to be like just very plain and low-key and very grounded and not too wild so it won't be too wild you won't be seeing people dressing too crazy um but this is also a popular aspect to where people just suddenly want to get a tattoo or suddenly want to get a piercing or change their hair or something like that um, I did see somebody on Instagram post a picture, you know, as I'm recording this, the full moon is still building up in this aspect of uh, the sun trying Uranus, it's building up. Um, but someone posted something and they probably have the full moon activity like really popping somewhere in their chart that has to do with their appearance. Um, because they're like, I shaved my head and it means all this symbolic stuff for me to have shaved my head and this is my new look, you know? So, um, people might do, and it's shocking. Oh my gosh. A bald headed woman, like who have, has had a full head of long, luscious hair for years. That's shocking and different, right? So, um, that's what this aspect can bring, especially 
the full moon energy is still lingering and that's like somebody that i always say full moons are i can't take this shit no more like um what's the movie uh the nutty professor the first one <laughs> when dave Chappelle's character he he gets all he people are heckling him on stage and he's like silence I can't take this shit no more. <laughs> Full moons always make me think of that in my mind. Okay. Because it, you do come to a breaking point sometimes and have that type of a moment to where you have to change something good or bad. It could be a good moment of like, I can't take it anymore. I have to go after this thing that I've been dreaming of having and you know, that I want and it's something that's good. Right. Or it could be cutting the motherfucker off because you just can't take their shenanigans anymore and their bs so you know there, there's a wide range of things but yeah the sun in a trine aspect to uranus is um, a really dope aspect for expressing yourself who you truly are and shocking people with stuff um, but like i said i don't know how shocking earth energy will be <laughs> it might be like you know, something super simplistic, like, look, I'm rocking a different color polo today. I'm wearing orange, uh, an orange polo instead of white or brown. Like, that's very Virgo, actually. That's my Virgo nerd voice. But um, that is on the second. And then on the fourth, this is when we have Venus in a square aspect to Mars. Now, this is um, where she at? Okay. Venus and Mars are squaring it off. Um, it is exact on the, tw uh, the, bleh, I can't even speak. Um, it's exact on the 4th of September, but it's building up in the days prior. So I would say we start out the month of September, like the first week or so with a Venus and Mars square. This can cause tension between the masculine, which is Mars, and the feminine, which is Venus. Um, Mars is in its home sign of super uber masculine ass Aries. And then Venus is um, in Cancer in a water sign. So she's super femme in this sign. So there could be like a battle between, you know, couples like kind of fighting it out a little bit more um it doesn't matter your gender that you identify with or anything there's usually a masculine and a feminine energy and um you know so th those two energies could be just kind of like not really getting along very well or you know I, what i have found also with venus and mars squares is um sometimes the tension brings good stuff you know what I mean by good stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, the Venus and Mars tension can bring passion and that like, I got to have you, you know, it could bring those type of feelings to where it's like there's a boiling point and, you know, you're frustrated because you haven't been with a certain person for a while or been with anyone for a while and you just have to break that tension finally and just rah, you know so um venus and mars squares can bring that too but they can bring the arguments between the masculine and feminine masculine and feminine or this could be inner inner conflict like uh between the masculine and feminine parts of yourself and once again gender does not matter okay it, this is energy here that we're all made up of so even dudes who have doodly things down below the belt have feminine energy it's just everybody has it at different levels so the feminine part of yourself can is the receptive part of yourself um the nurturing the kind the you know I, i'm relaxed i'm not trying to be the hunter gatherer out there in these streets pointing that mars arrow at people thinking everybody is out to get me and uh, I, I must fight and fight the enemy and protect and all that mars stuff um, Venus is like, oh, I'm just kicking back, you know what I'm saying? Eating some bonbons, some strawberries or whatever, like just in my little cute robe, um, uh, with a mask on my face, you know, face mask on and just chilling, watching TV in my bed with my fluffy pillows, you know, that's Venus's energy. So those two energies maybe between yourself are like, are squaring off. Like, should I be more action oriented or should I be more receptive? Um, which part of myself should I, 
you know, which role should I play that's within myself in certain situations? Um, should I sit on my ass or should I get off of it? You know, so that's um, Venus square Mars. And that is like the third and the fourth. It's very, very strong. And it continues through and lingers throughout the rest of the week, too. Um, we do have the moon in Aries. Oh, snap. I forgot to mention the moon goes into Aries. Oops. Um, the moon goes into Aries on the third. On the third of September um, <clears throat> and stays there for a couple days. So moon and Aries days, um, they are more action oriented. They are super testosterone charged. You will notice people driving faster and more as stupid on the road. OK, trying to show off. And especially if they have a car that makes a lot of freaking noise somehow, some way people tend to drive more like do that and make the stupid ugly noises with their car <laughs> to try to prove something to somebody oh my god it's so irritating um so people do that okay moon and aries days um but moon and aries days are good for like i said it's action oriented energy so if you need to get anything done that you've been procrastinating on um moon and aries days are good to just take charge take the reins and just full speed ahead and not let anybody get in your way um they can be days to where people are more emotionally impulsive because the moon rules our emotions aries is mad impulsive just ram it's a ram look at the the freaking horns right here like rams its head into something into the wall and then later on says Duh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. That was kind of stupid. That hurt. <laughs> you know, so it could be like dumb impulsivity. <laughs> but sometimes Aries energy is needed to, yes, light a fire under your ass, man. Get get you off of your bootay and, uh, and do what needs to be done and do it quickly and swiftly and not just, you know what I'm saying, hanging around. Because Virgo energy, this is Virgo season. Virgo energy can procrastinate like a mother. And so can Cancerian energy really procrastinate. And well, I don't know. And it depends on how I feel. And uh, I know I made a plan to do this. But now the day has come and I don't feel like it. I'm not in the mood. You know, the, oh my God, that's Cancerian energy. And Virgo just overthinks, overanalyzes, comes up with all the negative, <laughs> re you know, all the negativity um to come up with reasons why they shouldn't do something or maybe i shouldn't because then this can happen and then this and then what if this leads to this and then this blah, 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 blah. like virgos are worry wards so are cancers so they this energy causes people to be more stagnant a lot of times um but then we have the aries energy in the mix lighting that fire baby okay sprinkling that cayenne pepper or that freaking louisiana hot sauce or that tapatio okay like just sprinkling it on your days like yo i have to get this done i have to get it done now i gotta do this gotta do that so that's the moon in aries beginning on the 3rd of september and um it's gonna be there for a couple days and then on the 5th um this is when mercury moves into libra and mercury moves into libra and um, stays there only until the 27th of September because Mercury's not retrograde. He's not in shadow. He's not doing anything too crazy or weird right now. So he's in his regular orbit, which only lasts a couple weeks. So Mercury and Libra, the can't we all just get along <laughs> sign. Um, so Mercury enters Libra and the mental focus and the way we are communicating with each other is very Libran in nature. So I'll, I'll give you guys the good and the bad. So the good stuff is, yes, more diplomacy. So more willingness to compromise with people and to get along with people. Um, Libra is a very relationship oriented sign. It's one to one conversation and a one-to-one -one exchange with another person so because of that um yeah a lot of people do want to discuss relationships and love more than usual i know it's something to discuss daily between a lot of different people but it will be more of a focus um even more than usual during this time mercury and libra what else um talks about 
aesthetics you know libra is the ultimate aesthetics sign um libra rules like design and stuff like that and uh fashion is associated with libra modeling (laughs) modeling is associated with libra so more talks about stuff like that more of a focus and emphasis on it um the bad with libra i would say is people accuse libra energy of being fake all the time because Libra is so focused on getting along with others that they can see they could be a little too agreeable and agree with some shit that they know that down to their core of their being like the real true them doesn't F with whatever they're talking you know the person that they're talking to does but they'll try to act like it and play it off in order to keep the peace because Libra is the scales that want to balance out and um, be on the same page with somebody to be peaceful. Libra energy does not like conflict. So they do not want to argue with people. They'll just agree like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. I like that too. Like, bitch, no, you don't. (laughs) You know, you don't just stop. So um, that's kind of the bad with Libra. And a lot of a lot of times Libra energy can be accused of playing the devil's advocate, playing two sides of the coin. Um, you know, we have Mars still in Aries, right? And Aries energy is very like, pick a side and ride or die for your team and your people, you know, so and Libra energy is more like it's it's the opposite. It's, well, I see this side of the story, but in this person's side of things but I also see the other person's side like this person has a point but also their opposition has a point too I mean how are you gonna make me choose like that like I just can't so um that's also something with Mercury and Libra is um indecisiveness and you know playing different sides of the field and a lot of people don't like that you know who's a prime example of Libra and energy is um Snoop Snoop Dogg Snoop doggy dog (laughs) um because he's a Libra sun right um I know he's a Libra sun Scorpio moon and I think a Taurus rising um I don't remember his other placements but just him being a Libra sun he does embody a lot of Libra energy like he's a G to the core but also that Libra side of him It's like he's cool with this person, but then he's also cool with this other person. And um, he, you know, he'll do a reggae album and then he'll do a gospel album. And then he's down still also with gangster rap. And people are like, how are you going to be down with this? But also the opposite. Like, how are you going to be down with gospel and gangster rap? Like, you need to pick a side, my G. And people always come down on Snoop about that, you know, and he's. Um, he could be agreeable to where he hangs out with people like Martha Stewart and people are like, what the f- <laughs> is going on here? But that's his Libra energy. Um, now he can be very ride or die. He has his moments, but like that Libra energy is just like, is down with whatever and whoever. Um, so Mercury being in Libra, Mercury ruling communication, our communication is going to be very Libran for a few weeks. What I would say is um, definitely try to find the middle ground between you and an- another you and other people. Find what you guys have in common. Um, Libra energy loves to find commonalities between themselves and others so they can have those moments where they say, oh my god, me too. So that's nothing that's like bad you know that that's actually in my opinion and I'm a seventh houser which is very Libran um very Libra like I like that aspect of Libra energy like one-to-one combos with people and even people who you think you have the biggest differences with and who you would never have anything in common with if you sit there and talk to them you'll find like oh my gosh me too oh my god me too like we have a lot in common um that's it that's dope about mercury and libra but um being fake uh just for the sake of appearances or to keep the peace nah like that i'll say i don't think that's cool okay um so yes mercury and libra from september 5th through september 27th so also let's see on the 5th Nah, it's actually the six. On the six, um, this is when the sun, uh, the moon. I'm sorry, the moon moves into 
Taurus on the 6th of um, September. So the moon moves into Taurus on this day, it stays there for a few days. This is uh, Sunday, so this is the last day I'm going to cover for this week. But um, moon and Taurus days, as I explained every month, they're super chill. They make me think of chocolate and chilling in your robe, being lazy, eating snacks, watching Netflix, peacefully grazing in the sweet grass as a cow or a bull. Yes, that is Taurus energy all day, every day. Um, very peace loving energy that just does not want to be bothered. Okay. Um, however, with Uranus and Taurus, uh, it's the planet of the great awakener. It's lightning bolts. Remember that. So because of that, when the moon, which rules our emotional state encounters Uranus, we can feel a little bit like shaken or have anxiety or have a lot of worries about Taurus things, which can be like your money, your resources, your security. Do you have enough food? Do you have enough money for gas in the car? Do we have enough this, that, or the other? Um, that's Taurian energy. So the moon and Taurus days, you know, we're concerned with that. But when the moon is with Uranus, it's kind of an erratic energy um, that has to do with Taurus things. Okay. Um, so the moon will be in Taurus for a couple days and uh, all day on the 6th. Now, also on the 6th, this is when Venus moves into Leo. I think it's like over here on uh, Pacific time in the U.S., it's probably like right exactly on the 6th, like right after midnight. Venus enters Leo and she's there for a whole month until October 2nd. What does this mean? Okay, so we already know Venus is the planet of love and beauty and money and material things and resources, worth and value. That's Venus. So when she is in Leo when she's in Leo, um, she is, she does pretty well in the sign of Leo. She, look at this ponytail. This is a symbol for Leo. It's a ponytail, like whipping your hair around, hair flips. That's what I think of when I think of Venus and Leo. So, um, Venus and Leo, she is regal. She is the queen, like for real. She is rocking her leopard print or some kind of animal print and crawling around like a kitty and just being like a little you know what i'm saying <laughs> growling a little bit when she laughs and talks she squeals a little bit like oh that's so cute i can't even do it it's late at night when i'm recording this so my voice is like not all here but yeah squealing cute little squeal i swear that was such an ugly ass example i psh, I don't, I don't have the patience to go back and edit that out though. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. But, um, Venus and Leo, she struts, she's strutting in some heels. She's wearing red lipstick and a cat eye and her hair is either blonde or a lighter color, or it's just big or emphasized very much, or she's just touching it a lot and flipping it. Okay. No matter what color it is or how long it is. Um, there's more of an emphasis on your do okay, on your wig, all right, um, during Venus and Leo season. So um, if you are a hairdresser, you will probably be getting mad business, okay, like even more, but you'll see a spike in your business while Venus is in Leo, um, whether it's for masculine or feminine energies, you know, masculines will be wanting to get that, that, um, that tight fade, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and keep up with it, like, more frequently more often while venus is in leo so yeah we will see people rocking gold more um people rocking the animal print um the red lipstick and the cat eye like i said you know just strutting okay stunting um name brands you know people be rocking more of those and showing them off uh, Venus and Leo, she likes a lot of attention. So this transit can make people crave attention more and take more selfies. You'll, you'll be seeing a lot more selfies from people, even people that have been Virgo hermiting for a while. They may pop up over the next month with at least a few selfies like, hey world, 
you know, something like simple like that. But they have this bomb selfie that's like, yo, where have you been? Hello, looking good. So hermiting did you pretty well, looks like. Um, But even, you know, people who, yeah, are just not as actively showing off, they'll be showing off. Venus and Leo, what else? Venus rules art as well. Leo is about showing off, like I said. So um, people who have creative talents, they'll be more, I just see like voguing, even though voguing is not the only dance there is. When I think of Venus and Leo, I think of voguing around, voguing and whacking those dances that are like you, your hand motions just say like, I am fierce you know that type of movement I see with Venus and Leo so if you do any of those type of dances oh you're gonna be super popping during that transit um what else with Venus and Leo she is super affectionate romantic and expects uh demands because she deserves a lot of attention and gifts and just to be showered just because she is her Okay, that is Venus and Leo. Just because I'm me, I deserve this. Okay, so I would say mm, try to avoid tapping too much into that to where you're just being a straight up a-hole and just expecting people to do things for you, trying to get something for nothing. That's sometimes, you know, the negative side to Venus and Leo is you just think that you like because Leo is ruled by the sun, right? Or Leo. Yeah, Leo is ruled by the sun. So the sun, all it has to do is just shine up there every day. And people are like, oh, look, it's the sun. It's so fabulous. It's so great. And the sun is just there like, oh, yes, I'm just so great. You know, everyone worship me like that's the sun. So anything, any planet transiting through Leo is going to act like that. So Venus and Leo can have some people too much on their high horse and um, trying to take advantage of people. (laughs) What? You're not going to do this for me? I deserve it, though. But it's like, bitch, what did you really do to deserve it? I didn't have to do anything, but just look cute and just be proud of it. Yeah, that's how Venus and Leo can act on the negative side. But on the positive, she could be very complimenting. Yes, she'll expect compliments, but she could compliment others and uplift others. Um, if someone else is just looking good, Venus and Leo energy will make you recognize the efforts that someone put into their appearance to look good, you know? like oh dang hey look at you work oh my god I love that belt where'd you get it yo look at those shoes oh my god your jewelry is shining what's good like Venus and Leo on the positive side the higher vibration will be like that like giving compliments and stuff like that but yeah it'll that energy will make you expect attention from others too um, just try not to go overboard. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so Venus is in Leo from the 6th of September until the 2nd of October. She will be doing some things though. She will be making aspects to Uranus. Oof, child. Venus square Uranus. Lord have mercy. We have that a couple times a year and I'll talk about that more in the coming weeks, but she'll be doing that. Um, I think that's really the only major aspect that she'll be making is the square to Uranus. So when we get to, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Okay. So that's it, you guys, for the first week of September. So um, August 30th through September 6th of 2020. I really hope you guys have a fabulous week because of Venus and Leo. Fabulous. <laughs> have a fabulous week. Um, don't forget to start stunting and shining and glowing. Get your j glow on when Venus is in Leo. And don't forget to come kick it with me on September 2nd. If you can make it live um, through August 31st, you can choose your own tuition to come kick it and discuss Saturn and Aquarius, this three year long transit that's really rocking and changing our worlds. Like, what does it all mean? Um, so come through, come kick it. Um, even after the second, if you can't make it live. You can watch the replay. It'll be there on Nadia's website. So I'll leave those details when I get them. And um Oh, also, let me give a shout out. You know what? I should have done this in the beginning um, because a lot of people may tune out, especially if my videos are like hella long, but whatever. Um, I want to give shout outs to two of my um, subscribers 
named Camila. So I have two Camilas. Their names are spelled the same too. Um, that actually have uh, been generous, you know, and sent little donations to my channel. I really appreciate you ladies. Thank you so, so much. Okay. From the bottom of my little Taurus Scorpio Pisces heart. Okay. Um, so they drop some, some donations. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Um, any of you guys who have sent donations to me in the last like I don't even know how long I've had that up maybe a year almost I don't know um if I haven't shouted you out or named you or whatever um amongst all the crazy in my life just know that I appreciate your generosity of course I try to um contact everybody personally if I don't give a little shout out or whatever um, but if I haven't and you have donated to my channel, but I missed it for some reason because of the madness of it all, um, just know that I, I do appreciate you and your generosity is, um, like super, like I'm super grateful for it. So thank you so much. So yes, my two Camilas, what's up ladies. Thank you guys. Love you guys. All right. So I will see you guys in my next week. Have a dope ass week and don't forget to follow me on IG. For more horoscope stuff and some straight clowning in the language of astrology. All right. Take care. Peace.